Warning, the top eight most critical things Medicare doesn't cover. Original Medicare covers the vast majority of hospital and doctor procedures, services, and treatments, but they don't cover all. And these gaps of coverage can range from relatively unimportant to extremely critical. And so you are informed and can be prepared in case something comes up which it usually does, and today I'm going to go over the most critical things that Medicare doesn't cover. Hi, I'm Chris Prang, Medicare analyst, licensed insurance agent based out of Charlottesville, Virginia, and licensed in numerous other states as well, which you will see later in this video. I represent every major insurance company that offers Medicare coverage, and my goal is simple. It is to help you make a wise and confident decision about all of your Medicare choices, and I do this by reviewing your healthcare needs and philosophies along with your budget, and then enroll you in the plan or the plans of your choice. And if today is your birthday, then happy birthday to you. Jerry Seinfeld said, you know when you're getting old, when you get that one candle on the cake, it's like, see if you can blow this one out. So the number one thing that Medicare does not cover is routine dental, vision, and hearing aids. While Medicare will cover you for reconstructive jaw surgery after an accident or extraction of teeth to prepare for radiation, Medicare does not cover the main dental services that most people want and need, like regular exams, cleanings, x-rays, extractions, fillings, crowns, and root canals. When it comes to vision, Medicare does cover diagnostic exams to treat diseases and conditions of your eyes, like cataracts, glaucoma, and macular degeneration. It will cover cataract surgery as well, but it does not cover routine vision for eye exams and glasses or contacts. For hearing, it is similar to vision. If it's diagnostic, then it's typically covered. But if you need hearing aids, then forget it. So what can you do if you want any of these covered? Well, one, you could consider purchasing a standalone dental vision and or hearing plan. Numerous companies offer these plans and sometimes you can get one that combines both dental and vision or dental, vision, and hearing. But you should first check with your dentist and vision center which plans they are in network with. In my experience, vision plans are rarely worth it and I would only get a dental plan if your dentist is in the plans network and you use it for all the preventative services. Many times it's just cheaper to skip the insurance and pay yourself. Two, if you are under 65 and on Medicare, or if you are new to Medicare, then you could consider very carefully a Medicare Advantage plan. Most Medicare Advantage plans for now do cover routine dental, vision, and hearing, but don't choose a Medicare Advantage plan simply because it covers these routine extra benefits. You can watch my videos about Medicare Advantage. Don't be sorry, six tips for choosing the right Medicare Advantage plan. Critical info, the top 10 things to know about choosing a Medicare Advantage plan. Avoid these three Medicare Advantage plan risks and the three main rewards with Medicare Advantage plans. The number two thing Medicare doesn't cover is international health care or foreign travel. So original Medicare does not cover you if you are out of the United States or any of its territories unless you are in the U.S. and have a medical emergency and the closest place for treatment is a foreign hospital. So you are traveling in Canada and a Canadian hospital is closer than the U.S. hospital. You live in the U.S. and a foreign hospital is closer than the nearest U.S. hospital that can treat you regardless of whether you have a medical emergency. Medicare supplements. Some Medigap plans like the GN and high deductible G will cover up to 80% of foreign travel emergency. There is a $250 deductible. Generally, it has to occur within the first 60 days of being out of the country. And you pay first and then Medicare reimburses you at the Medicare approved rate. Many Medicare Advantage plans do cover worldwide emergency and urgent care services outside of the U.S. Similar to Original Medicare, where you pay for the services up front and then request reimbursement. My suggestion is to get good travel insurance instead that covers more than lost luggage and missed planes. Get travel insurance that covers medical emergencies and evacuation. Large insurance companies like Allianz and AIG, as well as smaller companies, offer travel insurance. Number three thing that Medicare does not cover is routine foot care. Medicare does not cover routine foot care like nail trimming and callus removal unless it's related to a medical condition such as diabetes. Number four, prescription medications. This trips a lot of people up. While Medicare covers some drugs on Part B, those are typically infusions and injections. Whether or not you are currently taking any routine medications, it is generally the wise thing to get prescription coverage either with a standalone Part D plan if you have or will have a Medicare supplement or with a Medicare Advantage plan. Now, if you have VA benefits as in Veterans Benefits or TRICARE, then you do not need a Medicare Part D drug plan. The fifth thing that Medicare does not cover is cosmetic surgery. Medicare does not cover elective cosmetic procedures unless they are medically necessary due to an accident or illness. So unless it's medically necessary, 
whatever that may mean, then forget the facelift and the hair transplant. But if you can prove it is medically necessary, then Medicare may cover you for varicose vein treatment, rhinoplasty, which is a nose job, a tummy tuck, Botox injections to treat muscle disorders, breast reconstruction after a mastectomy, hair loss treatment due to a medical condition, regular alopecia, not likely going to count. By the way, I hope you're finding this valuable and you like this kind of information. If so, please like this video and subscribe for future videos about maximizing your Medicare and retirement insurance. The number six thing that Medicare does not cover is alternative medicine and treatment. For treatment for chronic and terminal illnesses like cancer, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, MS, etc. This is where Medicare needs to up its game. There are many viable alternative medicines and treatments for things like cancer, Alzheimer's and other chronic conditions. Unfortunately, Medicare does not cover you for the alternative. They will cover you for the regular treatments, but not for the alternative treatments. If that concerns you, then you could consider getting a cancer or chronic condition illness policy. These are known as indemnity plans. You buy a lump sum amount of coverage, say $50,000, you pay a premium, and then if you get diagnosed with one of the conditions that the policy covers, they give you, not your doctors, the money to use at your discretion, which could go towards alternative treatment, travel expenses, and medical equipment. Number seven thing that is not covered by original Medicare is custodial care. I routinely get asked about this one. This is assistance with the activities of daily living, such as bathing, dressing, and eating. It is not covered by Medicare unless it is provided as part of a skilled nursing care or a rehabilitation services. But some Medicare Advantage plans are now covering a very limited amount of custodial care. And number eight, long-term care. After Medicare, this is the second most important retirement insurance that you should consider. I'm not saying you should get it. I am saying that you should consider it. Medicare generally does not cover long-term care in nursing homes or assisted living facilities. This type of care is usually covered by Medicaid for eligible individuals with limited income and assets. There seems to be a lot of conflicting information about the prospects of needing some sort of long-term care assistance. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, they state, our results show that 70% of adults who survived age 65 develop severe long-term services and support needs before they die and 48% receive some paid care over their lifetime. Unquote. Now, what exactly that 70% looks like is not clear. In my book, it's not really long term until it exceeds 90 days, as Medicare offers skilled nursing coverage for up to 100 days. And that is why many long term care policies use a 90 day elimination period. No point in paying for coverage that you may already have, unless you want to stay in your own home. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services goes on to say, quote, the prospect of becoming disabled and needing long term services and supports is perhaps the most significant risk facing older Americans. They also state long-term care needs often lead to financial hardship because paid care is expensive. Public programs like Medicare do not generally cover long-term care costs and relatively few people have private insurance coverage that can help defray expenses. Medicaid covers long-term care costs for people with limited income and assets, but many people incur substantial out-of-pocket costs until they deplete their financial resources and qualify for those benefits. The National Center for Assisted Living says that after a median stay of 22 months in assisted living, 60% of residents will transition to a skilled nursing center. And the Health and Aging Foundation indicates that once in a nursing home, about half of the residents stay for at least a year, while 21% live there for almost five years. But of the 58 million or so people over 65, only about five and a half percent of them actually reside in assisted living facilities or a nursing home are roughly 3.2 million people over 65. That seems to mean that most people that have a genuine long-term care need receive that care in their own home. Regardless of what the real numbers are, should you have a plan just in case you need the care? And if you think you do, then what is your solution for paying for that care? There are several options. Number one, you can self-fund your long-term care needs. If you have significant assets, then you can do this, whether in the home or in a facility. If you are still young enough, instead of purchasing a long-term care policy or waiting to purchase one when you are at or near retirement, then you could take the premium dollars you would have been putting towards a long-term care policy and add it to your current investments. Of of course, check with your financial advisor or CPA to be sure. The second thing is you rely on family members to care for you and or to pay for 
your care. Three, you rely on the government as in Medicaid or maybe the VA. So with Medicaid, you have to spend down and deplete your assets. Now, if you don't have much money, then it doesn't matter too much. But if you do, then it certainly does. You should consult an elder care attorney that can help you navigate Medicaid planning. If you live in the Central Virginia area and you want a recommendation, then contact me and I'll pass on the name of an attorney that handles this. If you are a veteran or the spouse of a veteran, many people miss out on this one, then you may qualify for the VA VA's aid and attendance. See the VA for that information. Number four, purchasing long-term care insurance, either as traditional long-term care insurance where you pay a premium and maybe never use it. I'm not a big fan of those for the obvious reasons. Or a hybrid or what's called an asset-based long-term care insurance policy. This is either a life insurance with a long-term care benefit or an annuity with a long-term care benefit or a combination of the two. You invest a lump sum amount and that gives you a death benefit in case you don't use it. And then the long-term care benefit. Oh, and you can typically get your money back without major fees. Be sure to read any policy and the fine print. I favor this option over a traditional long-term care policy in most cases. And the fifth way is some combination of these, perhaps a modest long-term care policy, but self-fund the rest. As of now, that is my plan. So those are the eight most critical things Medicare doesn't cover. Did I miss something? If so, please put it in the comment section below so we can all benefit. And when you need help or if you ever need help making a wise choice when it comes to all of your Medicare insurance options and you live in one of the states that I am licensed in, then please feel free to reach out to me either by phone or through one of my contact forms on my website. We will have an open and honest conversation about your healthcare needs and philosophies and budget. I will do my best to answer any questions or concerns that you may have and once we determine what is best for you and your unique needs and budget, I will will then enroll you in the plan or plans of your choice. And of course, be available down the road for your support. If you happen to live near the Charlottesville, Virginia area within an hour to an hour and a half and you would like to meet in person, then please reach out to me and we can probably work that out. That's it for today. If you want to stay up to date and gain more insight on maximizing your Medicare insurance, then please consider subscribing. And who do you know who may benefit from this info? Please share it with them. Chris Prang, the Medicare analyst. Make it a great day.